Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash Campaign dash Assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, March 16th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet bennett Ryla, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're talking about Masatoshi Ito, a Japanese entrepreneur who helped grow Japan's 7-Eleven empire and owned an enormous, and I mean enormous, number of 7-Eleven stores globally, who also died recently at the age of 98. But before we get into that, let's take a quick look at what else is going on in the world of business and tech. Let's get crackalackin'. All right, first things first, Ryan Reynolds mints his coins. T-Mobile is buying the parent company of Mint Mobile, which is partially owned by Reynolds in a $1.35 billion deal. Reynolds has honestly become quite the business connoisseur. He has, through his stakes in Mint Mobile Aviation Gen, which sold for $610 million, and through ongoing moves with professional sports teams, I believe that's all on top of his acting, which I'm sure commands a hefty price tag, which I was just thinking, by the way, How does he even have time for all this? Who knows? (laughs) Well, he's probably got help. (laughs) He probably has a lot, a lot of help, I would say. (laughs) Moving along. In digestion, the (laughs) snack division of Kellogg's, home to Pringles and Cheez-Its, will spin off on its own later this year with a new name, Kellanova, which I think to me sounds like what NASA would name a star that looked like a lucky charm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Kellogg said it took name ideas from employees who submitted more than 4,000 ideas, roughly a fifth of which were plays on founder W.K. Kellogg's name. Mm. And this was neat. Zipline, a drone delivery startup that's raised almost $500 million to date, announced its latest delivery system, which is capable of making 10 to 24 mile deliveries in as little as 10 minutes and involves a drone that flies to a destination, hovers around 300 feet then deploys a tethered mini drone, which drops down to deliver a package (laughs) accurately, say on the steps of a home, then gets yanked back up and leaves. It's pretty crazy, but the, the, the renderings and videos are pretty cool. Does it look like an alien in Aliens with the little head coming out of the big head? It looks something like that. It it really does look pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to check it out. Yeah, definitely check it out. Zipline's earlier drone iterations have flown more than 500,000 commercial flights. It delivered blood, vaccines, and medical supplies in Rwanda for years. And with its new platform, it's partnering with organizations like Intermountain Health to deliver medicine in the Salt Lake City area and even Sweetgreen. To deliver Mm, salad. Very interesting. In other news, Samsung will invest $230 billion to build a massive computer chip making facility outside Seoul, thrilling the South Korean economy and destroying snackers who may have clicked on world's largest chip headlines with high hopes. (laughs) Also, not ideal, the FBI found that in 2022, Americans may have lost more than $10 billion to cyber incidents across more than 800,000 internet crime complaints. That's up from $6.9 $6.9 billion in 2021. And Oive, Argentina's inflation rate hit 102.5% in February, meaning consumer goods have more than doubled in price there since 2022. Wow. And lastly, March Madness tips off in earnest today with the fates of dozens of teams in the balance. Also in the air, according to the American Gaming Association, are the estimated $15.5 billion in bets on this year's NCAA men's tournament. The American Gaming Association estimated around one in four American adults will bet on the tournament this year. And ESPN on Sunday night when the brackets opened up saw roughly 2.6 thousand brackets being created on the site per minute. How about that? That's a lot. I will not be betting on that. No. Are you making a bracket? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know enough about it. I would just. That's de- exactly the right person to make a bracket. Oh, really? I just feel like I would I would lose all of my money immediately. You know, you have just as good, if not better chances knowing nothing. 
Well, maybe I'll change my mind. All right, Julia, let's talk 7-Eleven. I love 7-Eleven, but only in Japan. (laughs) Okay, why? So I feel like this is surprisingly common knowledge um, for anyone who has been to Japan. And I am not a seasoned world traveler by any means, but Japan is one of the places I've been. And the first night that I got there, I'd went with a friend from college Uh, He had really bad jet lag and I had nothing to do and I don't speak Japanese uh, at all. So I was like, well, uh, I guess I'm going to go amuse myself, but I didn't know where to go. (laughs) So I went outside the hotel and there was a 7-Eleven there and I was like, well, I'm hungry. So I guess I'm going to go there. Smart. And it was incredible. It was like nothing I'd ever seen in the United States. Just an incredible bevy, (laughs) an array of snacks and drinks and you could get like cups of wine or cups of sake, but also mm. teas and all, all sorts of things. And there was places to sit and you could do some banking. And I mean, it was just banking. incredible. <laughs> yeah. You, like it was like anything you wanted to do, you could do there. Wow. Yeah. And there were like magazines and books and not that I could read any of them, but I, it was just fantastic. And then shortly after that, I, I would ask people, I was like, you ever seen a 7-Eleven anywhere else. And apparently it is well known that Japanese 7-Elevens and 7-Elevens throughout Asia are incredible. Mm. Whereas here, I feel like it's a last resort. There's nothing else open. And if (laughs) I don't get cat food, (laughs) like I never want to go to 7-Eleven here. Really? Okay. Well, well, now you know, if you want to go to 7-Eleven, go to Japan. Yes. Amazing. So it turns out Masatoshi Ito, who we were talking about earlier, he has died at age 98. Um, According to the company, he died of old age, long, healthy life. And he is one of the reasons why 7-Elevens are A, everywhere in Japan, and B, why they're so great. Okay. So going back in time here, uh, 1927, there's a merger of several Texas ice houses. They make ice. Uh, They're known (laughs) as the Salad Ice Company. You don't say. (laughs) Yeah, well, I was thinking about the word ice houses and I was like, do people re- like what would people think that like a like you could assume they make ice there or it's just like a very cold place. Like, <laughs> like <a house laughs> that's ice. true. Like you go visit the Texas ice houses. Like a cryotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So they were known as the Southland Ice Company and they went through a lot of changes, but ultimately they pivoted to food and beverage and became a chain of convenience stores known as 7-Eleven because they were open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Love it. Now, over in Japan, Masatoshi Ito, he becomes the president of his family's clothing store. And then in the 1960s, he ends up going to the United States and he is just really inspired by the American grocery store. And is like, I'm going to go back to Japan and start my own grocery chain using what I've learned here. And that was called Ito Yokado. Very nice. It's a very inspirational place, American groceries, right? Yeah. And you're just like, wow, look at all this capitalism (laughs) on display. Um, But it really took off. So his company, it's doing great. And then in the 1970s, he's got this exec, Toshifumi Suzuki, and he's coming to the United States a lot because he's trying to get the company a Denny's license, another Mm. great American chain. (laughs) Yes, a treasure. (laughs) And Denny's is whatever, but Suzuki is like, I love 7-Eleven. So he goes back to Ito and tells him, we should do 7-Eleven. We should become a 7-Eleven licensee. And they do. So in 1974, Tokyo gets its very first 7-Eleven. And this just leads to a massive boom in 24-hour convenience stores all across Japan. Uh, They are known there as Konbini. And by the 1980s, they're just everywhere. Uh, Ito, his empire has over 4,000 of these things. He also has the Denny's and all the other stores. And according to the New York Times, at at this point in the 1980s, he's generating about $12 billion um, in annual sales a year. So Wow. But eventually, and this is interesting to me, is the 7-Elevens in Japan are just great, right? Like everyone loves them. They're a cultural phenomenon. At some point, Japanese tourists that are going to Hawaii are like, hey, these 7-Elevens suck. And so Ito ends up taking over all the 7-Elevens in in Hawaii. Um, And in the United States, Southland is actually not doing so hot at all. So in 1991, Ito Yukado comes in and buys a 70% stake in the company. Wow. Now it's got all the 7-Elevens, basically. (laughs) Yeah. And there were a lot of changes. Uh, there's, There's plenty of name changes that are going on. 
in 2005, Ichiro Yukado became 7&I Holdings, and they're basically the holding company that has 7-Eleven Inc. And, and all of the other stuff. But essentially, yeah, they are the 7-Eleven empire we know today. They have over 80,000 of them globally, including 21,000 in Japan. And in Japan, they're great. And if they're here, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and it all started from some ice houses in Texas. Yeah. It's like they they took the inspiration and then they made them way better. And I would say if you are curious about the Japanese 7-Eleven experience, you can go to YouTube and just type in 7-Eleven in Japan. And there will be so many videos. I watched so many videos today of people going through all of the different snacks yep. that they were getting. And it's very amusing. It's great. And bada bing, bada boom, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, you can go sign up at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have a terrific Thursday. We'll catch you tomorrow. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.